Hello and welcome to episode 391 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan and I am back for another edition of Market Monday. This one being recorded on a Tuesday due to the July 4th holiday. Hope you all had a great one. Of course, this show is designed to get you up to speed very quickly on recent average draft position, aka ADP movement in the fantasy football market. In the show notes, you can find a free link to the charts and a full article on this topic from ETR Director of Analytics and the man behind all this, Michael Leone. By the way, reminder, important, anyone who purchases or has purchased our Draft Kit Pro, which is $49.99, that gets you a $10 credit to your underdog account. That page to get the credit is now live. I will put a link in the show notes where you simply drop your underdog username and we authenticate that versus your Draft Kit Pro purchase. Easy game. If you don't have an underdog account yet, just sign up for one using promo code ETR. You'll get up to $100 deposit bonus and then come back and claim your extra $10 if you have DraftKit Pro. All right, let's begin with the risers from the last seven days. And Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram is up 24 spots on underdog. He's up 26 spots in NFFC. Obviously, this is all about Alvin Kamara and the potential suspension. Kamara... For those of you guys who don't know, I talked about it last week, but for those of you who don't know, well, Kamara was allegedly involved in some kind of fight in Vegas uh, around Pro Bowl time. Case seems tied up in courts right now. I-, I think the headline that kind of spiked all this was from Mike Florio. And basically what he was saying is that any kind of felony assault charge comes with an automatic six-game suspension. But we don't know when this is going to be resolved. We don't know. If Kamara is actually going to be charged or convicted, maybe the lawyers will push it out to next season. I mean, who knows? Or maybe this case doesn't even get heard until midway through the season. So, you know, I'm not too excited about Mark Ingram for a few reasons. We don't know when or how long or even if Kamara ends up suspended. We also know that Mark Ingram is 32 years old, will be 33 in December. I'm not even sure that Mark Ingram is a viable NFL running back at this point. And we know that there's running backs off the street constantly that the Saints can bring in. You know, and this offense, sans Drew Brees, sans Sean Payton, I have efficiency concerns. I have running back target rate concerns. Brees was such an outlier there. Now, now all that said, Ingram's ADP is still around 180. I think he's more than fine there, but I don't think I'd go much higher. Second riser is Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs up 6.2 spots on FFPC. To 54th overall. At one point earlier this year, Jacobs was going in the mid 60s, even the 70s at times. And I thought he was interesting there, even though I wasn't excited about it. But at 54th overall, as Leone pointed out in the article, now we're talking about the dead zone, the running back dead zone. The only reason his ADP is getting up there into the higher 50s is because of projectable volume, not a pass catching role, not elite ability, not an elite offensive environment. Devontae Adams now in the mix to steal more work. I think they've been very clear that Kenyon Drake and Zemir White are going to play plenty as part of a committee. So when I'm on the clock here, you know, in the 50s, I'm for sure going for guys like Brandon Cooks, George Kittle, Jalen Hurts, Juju Smith-Schuster, Amari Cooper, Amon Ross, St. Brown. I I would take all of them over Josh Jacobs. Last riser to mention is Nico Collins. Nico Collins starting to gain a lot of steam up 7.4 spots on underdog to 188th overall, up 34 spots on NFFC to 172nd overall. We are doing a hot takes episode of the show later this week with Silva, and I will be discussing Nico there. Stay tuned for that. But for now, I'll say that this ADP move, I think, is long overdue on Nico Collins. The general public underrates Davis Mills, in my opinion, underrates Pep Hamilton. And we know Nico has the measurables of an elite wide receiver target competition is clearly very light. So yes, I think Nico is going to start to rise really quickly in drafts. I don't mind reaching a half round or around the head of ADP right now uh, for Nico Collins, even after this move. All right, let's get to this week's fallers and man, people have given up on Traylon Burks quickly. Um, bad reports from camp, you know, related to asthma and also some, you know, reports, I say in quotes, that he's likely to open the year behind Robert Woods, who's coming back well from the ACL tear, and speculation that Traylon Burks will also be behind Nick Westbrook-Akine. You know, 
that stuff doesn't really bother me. I, I'm sure the asthma thing is not new for Traylon Burks. He's played with it. The Titans knew about it. And in June, uh, of course, the veterans are ahead of the rookies. To me, it's only news in June or July if the rookie is actually ahead of incumbent veterans. So yes, I would be shocked, shocked if Traylon Burks was not ahead of Nick Westbrook Akine come week one. And now Burks' ADP is getting to a spot where I'm pretty intrigued. I didn't like him in the 70s, but now we're talking 87th overall. And because that's the new Burks ADP on underdog. And he's also down 10 spots to 97th overall on FFPC. I mean, that's really cheap for someone who has direct path to being his team's number one wide out with Traylon Burks natural ability. Another faller is an interesting one, Patrick Mahomes. And I, I'm not exactly sure why, but Mahomes is down 10.6 spots on NFFC to 56th overall. He's down four spots on underdog around 48th overall there. I mean, there's no doubt that Mahomes is a worse bet without Tyreek Hill. Way worse. You know, not only is it Tyreek Hill's unique ability to turn ordinary four yard passes into 70 yard touchdowns, but the way he affects defensive coverage, even when he doesn't get the ball, is so valuable on Tyreek. But for Mahomes, I still think volume, talent, scheme. You know, it's still really hard for Mahomes to flop. I think the question now, is he too close to the other tier, which would make him a value? I mean, I always preferred Lamar Jackson over Mahomes, even though the market still doesn't. But, you know, let, let's talk underdog. You know, would you go Mahomes at 48 or Kyler at 60? I think that's really close. So I guess my point is that whereas Mahomes at 40 was bad, I'd certainly rather have Kyler at 60 than Mahomes at 40. But as we creep into the 50s on Mahomes, I'm much more okay with it, especially on underdog where we can get easy stacks for best ball. I mean, you can get Juju, CEH, Rojo, Hardman, Sky Moore, MVS. I mean, all those guys go late. And so if you get Mahomes, you're in a spot to create a bunch of Kansas City stacks. Last thing to mention on followers is J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins is down 7.6 spots on Fantasy Pro's ADP to 47. He's down eight spots on NFFC to 61st. I get that the mini camp stuff on J.K. Dobbins was not great. You know, John Harbaugh said, well, he hoped J.K. and Gus Edwards will be out there practicing, you know, but they're not. And, you know, there were some light rumors that maybe Dobbins' knee injury was worse than originally reported. I mean, Dobbins' knee injury last year was August 28th. He will have had the full year full calendar year to get right. And the standard these days is like nine or 10 months. So I, I get that people are scared. I get that the news isn't great right now, but a lot of this feels like speculation to me. You know, the Twitter doctors, et cetera, they haven't actually examined JK Dobbins. And honestly, if I'm a coach, I am trying so hard to under promise and over deliver in spots like this, just out of fairness to the player. If John Harbaugh says, oh yeah, JK looks great. He'll be ready for training camp. And then Dobbins isn't. Well, that makes Dobbins and the Ravens look bad and they have to answer a bunch of questions about what went wrong. But if Harbaugh says, well, look guys, you know, it's a bad injury. I don't know. We'll see when he starts practicing or if he plays week one, you know, we don't know. And then if Dobbins does end up practicing come August or playing week one, well, he looks like a hero, you know, a warrior. Anyway, this is a, a long way of saying that I am buying the dip on J.K. Dobbins. I hated him in the third or fourth round last year, but, but now we're talking fifth or sixth round just an elite setup for J.K. Dobbins, given the way I think the Ravens are going to try to play this year. All right. I'll be back later this week with Silva for a hot take episode. We also have a mailbag episode coming up. Reply to that tweet from the Established to Run Twitter if you want to get your question in. Looking forward to both of those. That's going to do it for another episode of Market Monday. This one recorded on a Tuesday for Leone, for Jerry. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.